What's up, Blizzard Nation? Welcome back to Strictly Blizzness, episode 144. Huge shout out as we wrap up the season, and then we start doing some of the behind-the-scenes stuff to the man behind the scenes, Sean, Creative Edge, you are amazing, Edge VR, all of the above, and all the work you guys have done this season. So, Yes, thank you very much. And he's got kids out there again today. Yeah, yes. Another camp. Last week. Oh, camp's almost over, because you know why? <laughs> School's starting pretty soon. Uh I'm sure everybody wanted to hear that. (laughs) Splendid. I'm Uh, like an Uber driver this week, so it's cool. (laughs) We're packing up for one to go back to school, so that is fun. Awesome. Apartment living. Uh, We thank one more right off the bat. I mean, the fans, the past two games. Showed yeah, up, I mean, showed up in droves. Yeah, so. let's talk about the fans yeah. before we talk about the game. Yeah, absolutely. So huge shout out um, to five thousand plus games in the thick of summer in Wisconsin is awesome. So um, incredible environment. Uh, and no, that does not mean we can host six games in July, <laughs> Todd. I was so going to say. Just... <laughs> I was going to say the very first thing he said to me after. After the first game was, well, you guys are kind of shooting yourself in the foot for you can't get anybody in the stands in July. We can when we're winning and it's, yeah, you know, it's playoffs, sure. But you also had to do a lot of work to get those people in. Not saying that you wouldn't work hard all the time, Correct. but there were a lot of things that had to happen in a short period of time uh, to get that second game to look the way that it did. And I think our games looked the part of a playoff game 100 percent. um they sounded the that part they absolutely looked the part and i feel bad for arizona because they had to have their game on a monday night so i'm sure that affected them but they still had people in the stands yeah by all means so nap cast ben thank you very much uh all the office interns i can't list them all down and then uh pmi who kind of helped with all the creative stuff we had going and ticket sales and food and beverage so not possible without those incredible people at the rush center so if you get a chance to support them at any other event this summer um it's light on events till they get really busy in the fall to do so they're a great building fun of great shows and stuff coming up so excellent i'm gonna let's circle back to ticket sales and some of the comments that i saw around um all the money that we made just as an example, we're going to talk I, about that in a little bit. I didn't read anything, so you're going to have to bring me up to speed on so that. No, so, no, this was the trolls. Oh, okay. This was the trolls after the game. So, let's talk about the game first so that we can then migrate into the beauty of the championship game and where everything is at. So, we lost the game. Obviously, if you know this show, you know we lost. Um, if you're new to the show, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not the show for you to turn, tune into for the first time, but uh, we lost the game, and it, it really comes down to we didn't play. We didn't play like the team we have on paper. We didn't play like we did the previous week. Um, you cannot be in a playoff game, turn the ball over four times, and expect to win the game. Uh, the guys, of course, felt horrible afterwards, and... You know, I can look back at that day, and I felt really good going into that game because of how they performed the week before, right? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, The game itself, you know, like I said, four turnovers, two turnovers on downs. It just, it wasn't what our guys were supposed to look like at that game. So like Ryan said, thank you to the fans that showed up and hung with us, hoping we were going to come back. I mean... I really thought it was it was reminiscent of the first game we played of the season, mm-hmm. except we were very far ahead, and Mass came back from behind and beat us. Um, and this time, they were ahead and stayed ahead, and we just, you know, some I heard or saw some people saying it was play calling. Matt didn't. I I, I don't know that you know what to do anymore when nothing is working, um, when you have guys dropping passes, when you have passes that are incomplete and sure he threw stuff into the stands and you know the final play that that he threw was an interception so there's that but um you know it just it wasn't it wasn't to the caliber of what we thought we could play so that leads me into this is what was beautiful to see 
and I, I wasn't sure, and you sent me a text, and I sent Larry a text. Our guys needed to watch those guys on the podium and see that that could have been them if they had played differently, right? A lot of them didn't. A lot of them went back to the locker room. Some stayed in our pit and just respectfully stayed away just to let the mass have their due, yeah. and, and they got it. And we weren't sure because we had said all along there's going to be a fifth quarter. So I had gone up in into the suites to, you know, get everything set for us to leave. And I looked down on the field and actually one of the women that works for PMI said, you know what? That's really cool to see. And it was all of the fans that stayed through the presentation to talk to the players. And, you know, Mass had cleared the field by then and we had a fifth quarter that was really cool to see because we did have a great season. We had a season to be proud of. We had a record breaking season um, and we have very, very good players. And although they didn't have a good game, um, I'm glad they had the camaraderie of their teammates as well as our fans to support them after in the fifth quarter. Whereas if that had happened in Vegas, they wouldn't have had that same sure. condoling, condoling nature, condolences, if you will, on the loss. So thank you, fans, for all that you do. We really appreciate uh, what you do. But it was a loss. We have to deal with that. Um, you know, there, this is a behind-the-scenes show, so let's talk about that a little bit. Going to Vegas would have meant... There's no big pot of gold. The league doesn't award you a million dollars because you won. There's just, it's not there. You get bragging rights. Right. That's what you get. So we would have to pay for, because the league does not pay for the players to fly out. So there would have been, you know, three, four hundred dollars depending on where, or how we could have secured flights um, times 40 some players, 40 some players plus staff. Um, and that's just on the football side because we would have taken extra people medical wise and stuff. Normally we would travel with 28. We would have brought our injured guys with, um, that are still in town. So that would have meant about 40 people going, um, admin, we would have had probably another 10 going. Uh, and then we figured a couple of fans, we were looking at chartering a flight for a hundred people, not cheap. And that would have, it would have been you know, the Blizzard organization, which would have meant Larry and I paying for it because the organization wouldn't right. have been able to cover it. So um, not to mention the league does put, pay for the players' rooms, so the roster gets their rooms covered. But we would have had to have covered the rooms for everybody, sure. everyone else that would have been going. So there's that. And that's not cheap in Vegas um, or in Henderson. That's probably right. 150 to $200 a night because it's the weekend. And Raiders training camp, I believe. So. And the training yeah. camp, because yeah. we're, again, in NFL season, which is where we do not want to be. And actually, the hotel that we are staying at, that's for the league is using, is the Raiders Hotel, which is the M Resort. Um, so there's a lot of dollars that people just do not get, go into these games. And um, very rarely can the ticket sales cover that. And, and we've said it. That's why, that's why these leagues hold. That's why owners give up is because there is a lot of just out-of-pocket expense that the owner has to cough up mid-season, during the season, post-season um, to cover the expenses. I guess let's shift, let's shift then to the West. Congratulations. To? Arizona, Arizona. and Kevin, who... I believe, unless you're going to air dirty laundry, we have a lot of respect for. Uh, <laughs> we, do. we do, but who is the one guy? I actually guy? text him going into that game, so I yeah. said good luck. Um, yeah, that's awesome. And a score and a game. I didn't watch the game, so you can chime in on that, but the score looked eerily similar. <laughs> they weren't p playing the number one seed, but clearly he's got a playoff team. Mass has a playoff team. Um, Kevin had a lot of rookies on his team as well this year. Started one and four. And started one and four. And look at him now. He's at the dance. Yep. And had a stellar performance Monday night. He was playing Monday night football. His game to get there was even, you know, watch a heck of a game in the last couple seconds. Go watch and 
go back and watch the Arizona Vegas game. So yeah, it, that there. that came down to coaching. Yep. Sorry, Davis, but that came down to coaching. And I even said it on this show that he's the one coach that I would fear playing would be Kevin Guy. The guy knows what he's doing. He's a great coach. Um, not knocking the mass coaching staff, but you got somebody, you know, you have a lot of experience there too. You got Stout there. You got a, a great um, staff, but my money's on Kevin. So I know that's terrible because I'm in the East, but my money's on Kevin. <laughs> and I can't put money on the game. So there is betting in Vegas. Um, but we as IFL owners, players, all of that cannot participate in any of that. Um, but, you know, I say that as a, my money's on, but it's not really on. I've got to <laughs> got clarify, <it. laughs> not betting on the can't game. Do that. Yes. Can't do it. But um, it should be a great game. It really should. Let's change it up. Um, <laughs> let's talk about next season just a little bit. Um, when I got here today, Ryan said that we have to um, start talking about next season. So what do we got to do already? It's only August, Ryan, uh, she says, but no. As of this episode, I probably have two weeks to work on game balls, um, regardless of what happens at the league meetings regarding footballs. So because we got to be ready either way. So yeah. So we have to put team nights in play. Probably today, after Kathy and I stop recording, I'll run by where my head's at and what footballs we need, and there's still room to breathe on certain games that we have to have at least a, a kind of a plan. And then I'll maybe relax a little bit. Just once that, that's the real clock is the, the footballs. So, I mean, it dashboards yeah. and it turf squares it. normally, turf squares normally have a little bit more time on, but the footballs is the clock. So, yeah. yep. Um, I did make a suggestion to Todd that the league should purchase balls for, the Eastern and Western championship game. Yeah. I think that would make sense. I, I mean, they, they do it for the championship. Why not the Eastern and Western? That would be a great ball for a fan to catch. We actually played with the same ball we played the first game with this last yeah. playoff game. Yeah. So it was kind of ironic. We were playing the same team with the same ball um, because we switch up the balls just about every game. Yep. Um, so... Um, We'll be working on next season, so the behind-the-scenes stuff starts right away once we get back, and I think we're going to go to every other. Yeah. Yep. Um, so we'll do our hiatus with Blizzness for a little bit. Not, we're not like months, but it'll be every other week instead of every week. Um, we save that for in-season and training camp once that hits. Um, and Sean's maybe had enough of us. <laughs> yeah, Sean's kind of sick of hearing <laughs> from us, so I, I understand. <laughs> Uh, let's talk a little bit about next season, since we're on the subject, about a big change that's coming. The NFL kickoff rule? Boy, does that have a buzz around it. Oh, Anyways. my God. <laughs> yeah, it does. And so, okay, well, now that you changed Sorry. the topic, what's your take on it? I don't love it. It's becoming the non-hit league, and I understand the concussions and stuff, but it is real interesting. Such a, like, I don't, I don't know if I mind the kickoff change. Do having to... I, notify the other team when you're going to onside kick and you can only onside kick when you're losing. I don't understand what we're doing here. And I am not even a football guy. We've talked about that through and through, but I read that. I'm like, what the heck is going on? So, so. I 100% agree with you. <laughs> the problem I have with it, and I get that anytime there's impact, but look at our league, look at our guys yep. and what they go through. They get hit constantly because it's football. I understand the exposure with the NFL. I understand the number. You know, th those teams have 50-some guys on their roster. So I right. get it. They're, it's it's twice the size of our roster. Um, you know, their depth chart is literally on the sidelines yeah. waiting to go in kind of thing. So I understand the exposure. But when you look at the number of players that have been affected and why they made the change, I think there were two. <laughs> all season last year that yeah. it happened with. So I agree with you. Because on an onside it, kick, and again, we don't ever rely on Ryan to carry football conversation. You can't even get to full speed as a no. player. Yeah, there's some hits still, but like you're talking about a 10-yard run. Well, like, So having to notify that you're going to kick an onside yeah. is crazy. So I think yeah. that's silly. Where, where's the strategy in yeah. that? I, I would agree. 
The other thing is, is worry more about the guys that are doing late hits or uncalled for hits. Cause we got that in our league too, that aren't always called. So you see somebody, somebody has it out for somebody on the other team and, and they're going to get them whether there's 10 yards or not. Yeah. So worry Sorry, more I about that. Tangent you there. Where were you going? No, I changed for us. I Sorry. think that was great because, okay. <laughs> um, you know, it is, we had this, this discussion in our house the other day. Um, cause my girls are into football and, you know, they were looking for Larry's input, Larry's sure. stance, cause he's a big football geek. And he just sat there and listened while Helen said, that's just the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> and his, his comeback was good. His comeback was, yeah, I, I don't understand where they're going with this. I guess, I guess let's see it play out. Cause yeah. you know, he's. He's the even keel guy, which right. until the Packers have something happen, then he's going to be like, that's the dumbest rule I've right. ever heard. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, where I was going. Sorry. Where I was going is we will have a new look to the Blizzard next year. And what does that mean? We were hoping to announce it on the podium when accepting oh. the trophy. Yeah. But we're going to announce it here instead. We are. I don't, I don't know which thing we're talking about, so I'm going to let you do this. Because <laughs> the, Adidas, the Adidas deal's out there, too, so I want to make sure. No, it's out there about. already. Okay. That's out there. Okay. I'm talking about our look. Oh, okay. Right on. Okay. I mean, that's, that's a big deal for you and Larry and our friends at PMI, so why don't you take that one? Okay. Yep. So we will have a new field next year. Yay! Yep. The crown goes wild. Uh, the field will be... Um, so we... we there's two things. It's tired. It needs a new home. Um, but also our league has been standardizing things behind the scenes. And one of the things that we've standardized on, and we've talked about it on this show, that if you're going to buy a new field, you must buy this type of field, um, which has the padding, which has its squares. Um, you can get into it. Sure. You saw the presentation as well. It's a, it's a great modular field that takes up less room. Yeah. So PMI is looking forward to having it as well. Um, and we are going to put that in play uh, for the first game next year. Yeah, it's an interlocking system. You've seen it at Bay Area, San Diego, Arizona, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, Tulsa. Iowa. Yeah. So, so it's a, a lot of a lot of system. It's not rolled up. So it is flat every time you put it down. It's an interlocking system that they've done called Nextfield. They've done a great job with. So. Yeah, so we're excited to have that, and we're hoping to do a preview of it with our season ticket holders. Um, once we get it in and we lay it down for the first time, we'll have our season ticket holders. And we walk might get to it. do a potential new season ticket holder in that event too, where you could choose your seat, come actually see what it looks like, and where you want to sit on what yard line. We've never had the chance to do that because we can't get the field down. We have to get the field down before the home opener this time, so PMI learns how to set it and so someone from next field has to come out the first time and cut end zones and all that stuff so it's specifically custom to our building so it'll be pretty cool so i'm excited yeah 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 we're really excited to have it so it'll be a new look um i we would show you but we don't have it finalized right. per se um but it'll be very pretty yeah and i think it says something and we don't we don't unpack all the way behind the scenes there but your guys's commitment to the community. I'm not going to say the league because we know what you think of the league, but like the community because that's I a big deal. I love the league, by the you way. You do. She does, the, actually. He's not, that's not derogatory. No, not at all. I spent for, I did what I was told and sat for a little bit this game and a lot of it was with Todd. So I know he watches. I had a blast and some great conversation and learned a lot about his family I didn't know and it was really good. It was awesome. Um, so yeah, I think it's But he it's showed up a with testament. a blue jacket. I know. <laughs> It's a testament to community too, not just the league, because that's it's a big commitment for us in the Rush Center and to get something awesome in there. It'll be real cool. It'll look yeah. it'll look really sharp. Go back and watch the YouTube feeds from any of those teams that we just listed. Naz, sorry, that's another one. Um, that system is great. So yeah, yeah there's quite a few teams, yeah. new and existing, um, that have migrated over. I think Sioux Falls has it too. No, not yet. Oh, that was the old... That's still their gray one has always looked that clean for that reason. Yeah. However they get that thing to lay flat, they do. But, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so that was, that was the big, big news. What else do you have? I don't think a lot. Right. 
go hang out. You'll get to do some league meetings and all the award stuff's coming. At the time of this, the only ones that are out there are the all IFL teams, I believe. So there's nothing else we can share in that bucket because we don't know it yet. We just know what category. Well, we had guys that hit those teams. We did. And high up on the list. So yeah. shout yeah. out to them. They did a great job to get on that rookie list. Um, there are more this week. By the time this episode airs, you will have seen more IFL. Yeah, all the IFL all, stuff. All yeah. IFL yeah. defense, offense. I don't think teams. team awards in the big ones are actually till the banquet. You can make right like that's how it happened last year. Yeah. Right? So well, apparently everybody knew but me. Um, <laughs> I did. Yeah. No, Julie knew. They were all like, <laughs> "You're going back up well, there." I think Julie always knows the Pettit one. So <laughs> well, they they all seem to know more, and yes. they, so they thought it was weird that I didn't know. But I just think it's better if you're going to receive an award. Don't know. Right. I mean. They were releasing it, and then we'd all show up there and know who wins. Yeah. I'd rather sit there with all of you know the people that are in the league and correct and yep. be surprised by who wins. Now we all know because we do the voting, so we get we know the finalists. We get the finalists, yep. so yep. we don't know who wins, but we know who's in the running. So we can look around the room at the three or four teams that are in the running, and you know be like, "Congrats to yeah. whichever one of you." So basically, what happens is there's there's a a survey that goes out and you can pick whatever team you want. And then that gets drilled down to a, a smaller set. And then that gets voted on as well. Yep. So some of the teams, you know, like we won, well, we won franchise of the year and people were like, how can they be franchised? They didn't even make the playoffs. Well, because there's more that goes into it right. than just yeah. football. So anyway, yeah. yeah. So that all is coming. So still plenty to watch on social. And again, Ben has done an, and Annie on Ben's team and Tyler, yeah, the three of them stuff. that make up that, I'll call it social media team have been incredible. So you probably will see way more from us in the off season than the seasons past just because he is dialed in. And yeah. Yeah. All good stuff. Um, we're at some point, um, Trevor was working on a video of recapping the season. We'll put that out on social media as kind of a recap. It's going to be about four or five minutes. It's basically the road, road to the championship game um, that we lost. Uh, but that's what it was, and it's a recap of our season. So it's something that we still want to put out there because, again, we had a great season, and, and we'd like to have a memorial around sure. what that yeah. was. So <sighs> I feel better now. <laughs> um, I went to see a movie this weekend. Oh, nice. I went to see. I didn't move much. <laughs> I went to see uh, George and the Purple Crayon. Oh, that's out. It's really that looks good. awesome. It's really okay. good. Yeah, I really like him as an actor. It, Chuck and Shazam. Shazam. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Levi. Yeah. Um, but it was really well done. It's a great kids flick, but it's also a good adult flick because cool. there's you know adult humor in there as well. Um, but great for imagination, creative. If you have a child that is into creativity and, you know, whether it's imaginary friends or just a different way of looking at life, because like the new um, Lego movies coming out, yeah, which yeah. is the Pharrell Williams story, yeah, yeah. the Pharrell and how he talks about how he would see music and understand music, um, that kind of creative side of things. And much like what we're where we do our show, this is a very, yeah. you know. A VR arcade is definitely a creative side of things. So mm -hmm. um, whether you call it geeky or whatever, I don't know. What do the kids call it today, Ryan? <laughs> don't know. It's actually popular. Like it's very and popular. I am one of those dudes. So yeah. I, don't, I don't think any of those words are received the same as they used to be because it is cool to game. And, right. I mean, you'd be blown away, speaking of what players get paid, what some of these esports guys get paid. So it is a legit thing. So, oh yep. yeah, and colleges have teams, yep. and it's a sport. And so be sure to check out Edge, not just in the VR space. I mean, they do a great job of running um, Smash Bros and Rocket League, and some outstanding stuff you can get involved in. It doesn't ha you're not you don't have to just think of this place as coming here and throwing a headset on. They do a great job right. with all they do. So right, right, it's much more yep. than what you see in the building. Not to mention they do birthday parties. So if you're just trying to get into the, you're not really sure. Your kids are telling you that it's a cool thing and 
Johnny does it and yeah. we'd like to do it. Well, <laughs> come and experiment yep. here because they can Very set cool. you up and, and help you understand what it is that uh, those headsets are doing. And we've, we've done that where we went um, at Disney. Oh, yeah. Yep. And did a Star Wars one. Yes. Which was hilarious. Yeah. But that's a previous episode way <laughs> at the beginning. Anyway. Um, so if you haven't seen it, go out and see it. It's a great movie. Yeah. Well, I might go see it. Yeah, I would. Okay. I guess that's all we have wrapping up our season. Yeah. It was a sad ending to our season, but again, a great season. Shout out to all of our guys. Um, shout out to those who have um, won any accolades from the IFL. We're actually wrapping up um, this Thursday with our team. So we'll have guys starting to go home. Um, some have already left, but for the most part, they'll start leaving this weekend. Yeah. So stay tuned on social media for all that stuff and 2025 stuff. So yeah, we'll give the we'll give the players their due on social media. We've already started those that are making the IFL teams. Um, they will definitely because uh, we want to wear that as a badge of honor just as much as they do. Yeah. We had a lot of rookies this year. Um, we didn't have any vets on our team, but I was talking to a former vet at the, the watch party or not the watch party, but the, after the game, uh, Canty was in the house and mm -hmm. I was talking to him about the team and he had come at halftime and he said, you know, this has been a great team this year. You guys obviously have a good camaraderie and that's great to see. So, um, you know, a former player recognizing that also Triggs was in the house. Yeah. Um, he said the same thing, that it was a great season. He had been following all year, so was hoping to see a championship for us um, in the East. So all good stuff Yeah, coming out of you that bet. game. You bet. Yep. Okay. That's what we got. That's all we got. We didn't have much. Should we hit him with it? <laughs> There's a couple trolls out there. I'd like to hit him with it, but... Oh. Nailed yes, <laughs> let's let's hit him with it. Let's hit him with it. <laughs> Go, Go Blizz. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, share, and ring that notification bell to get all of our content in your inbox.